Come and get started on a new mission, mission. a new direction, direction. a new intention. intention. Welcome to 5.8G Alive at Connections 50 Plus. I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite. And I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph, catering to all your prospects in the third act of life. Economic well-being, well-being. social gratification, gratification. personal fulfillment. fulfillment. Join us on Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Connections 50 Plus Facebook page, YouTube channel, and on Gael the Caribbean. Welcome everyone. It's Wednesday evening and it's 5.8 GLI. I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite, one of the co-creators of Connections 50 Plus, which brings you 5.8 GLI. Now, for the past couple of weeks, you would have realized you've been seeing some repeats. And last week, you would have gotten a little note that explained to you why. So, Usually, Jennifer will be here, and yes, she is here today. So, let's hear from Jennifer with a special welcome to you. Hi, terry Everyone, it's so great to be here. Welcome to Connections 50 Plus 5.8 G Alive. I really miss you all. And I did get a lot of calls with concerns, what's going on, and Tarian has been keeping me informed of all the calls that she has been getting. So here I am. For those who didn't know um, why, my, why I was absent, miss me, yes, but was wondering what happened to Jennifer. Let me just update you a bit about what really happened. Well, let me say a few months ago, I would say, I went to do my annual pap smear and mammogram and the results of the mammogram showed it was suspicious. Let me, let me say it so, because in my case, it wasn't as a result of me feeling any lump or anything, but they thought, you know what? Uh-uh, this is something should be investigated. So I also visited my, my doctor who, um, you know, sent me for a couple of tests, et cetera, and referred me to the St. James Women Clinic where they, they do all examinations, you know, for different sort of issues with women. And in my case, they also felt that, you know, this seemed to be, it seemed to be like breast cancer. But to be sure, I had to do particular test because as I said in my case you know nothing was showing up really to identify yes you know what is the cause of of my situation you know anyway um fortunately for me the type of test I had to to do required certain type of machines and a Rima new hospital had all the machines that required that you know that was required for me to do these tests. So yes, so I went to the Arima New Hospital and I did the various tests that and X-rays that you know was required of me. And yes, it showed that I did have breast cancer and I had to do surgery. I happened pretty quickly, so I had to do surgery. So yes. I did surgery and that was just about two weeks ago. So because of my post recovery, I really could not sit and chat with you all as I am doing here. So I had to rest. I still have to rest a bit, eh? but nevertheless, I can sit today and chat with you. Very, very happy with the news that the surgery was successful. And I would say I'm recovering very nicely. Yeah. What I want to do, eh, let me tell you too, that while lying down there, I felt that, you know, I would like for our show and for today's show to share with you 
some of my, you know, my feelings, my thoughts, my observation, because I think it's very important and I know you all will want to know what's happening. So because of that, let's go to in tune, and I will chat with terri -Ann and share all about my feelings and my thoughts. Yes. <laughs> Jennifer, it is great to have you back. And yes. I will say that you do lots of things that I really, really admire. Not that I, you don't shock me, but you, I just <laughs> grow in admiration for how you approach things. And I will say that looking at you go through this discovery of the cancer and preparing and approaching the surgery, doing the surgery, and even the approach after. You really live our mission. This yes. third act stage is ours to conquer and ours to have. And you, you, you rock, you rock. I really <laughs> admire you. <laughs> so, Terry Ann, what um. Yeah, I thought, you know, let me share. And of course, in sharing is how people, you know, understand and may have other persons going through similar type of um, situation. Mm. I want to talk about how I prepared because I'm saying this because persons will ask, how you make our girl, you know, with Trini? <laughs> or even before when you tell them, they say, oh God, how you all make it, you know, that sort of thing. And as you know, I'm a planner by nature. <laughs> I'm a planner by nature. It's coming, Andy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so for me, the way I approach it, I thought, let me first say, what is the best thing for me to do to make sure that I approach in a very positive manner? And positive for me, my first thing is my faith, spirituality. So you know... My go-to <laughs> at the start is, is to my priest. I'm, and you know, we are Catholic, so it's my priest to say the mass, to offer all the prayers, and all my, I say, my prayer sisters. That's the sisters, my brother sisters. And share with them, let them know, hey, this is what is happening. This is the date. Hey, let's get together. And I know with the prayers, I'm good. I am so sure I will be good. Um, what I did do after the consultation with the, the, the doctors or the, the surgeon, um, again, I read up. I, I, I read up more on the situation. I spoke to, I, I fortunately, again, I have friends in the medical profession. So I was able to, to chat with them, share about the findings, et cetera. And got, you know, affirmation said, yes, you're going to be all right. This is something you do. And I know I know how to prepare myself for that. Now, after I did that, my next go-to was to <laughs> prepare my space. <laughs> because I know when I come out, Terry, and you know me, I don't want no sort of clutter and confusion and thing around me. Right. <laughs> Everybody, I want to interrupt Jennifer. I have to give all you. I have to give all you this joke. Now imagine Jennifer knows she's going into surgery. All right. Normal people will be what? Sitting down and fussing. Everybody knows too that Jennifer is now in a beautifully appointed one bedroom <laughs> condo. Remember, remember a couple of weeks we talked about it. Jennifer yes. now moving to the one bedroom condo, which she has meticulously and beautifully appointed. Listen, in the last week, Jennifer cleaned that place three times. <laughs> and I think that is how she dissipated her nervous energy. I am telling you, and it worked. So, <laughs> yes. So, of course, I, I spoke to my family members and I told them, listen, this is what I'm going to do and what I'm putting in place. They know me too, so they say, go ahead, you, you do your thing. I wasn't disturbed. So I made sure that my space, I created that 
calming space that I know when I got home, I, can't, I don't want to be looking around and seeing things to do. So, don't forget the garden. Don't forget yeah, the garden. Oh, <laughs> yeah, of course. So I had the garden. I come and fix up the cause in case I have to go outside and look out. I want to see my plants and everything looking good. Right. So that whole, so the week for, was for preparation. And because of the nature of my surgery, of course, being breast cancer, I knew I also had to look at, at the clothes, at, at what you're wearing in, in the house and everything open front, etc. So I, I did a little bit of shopping <laughs> to, to look for things that, you know, would be convenient and comfortable. So that being said, I also, I'm not really a cooker, eh? but guess what? I did some cooking because I don't want anybody. You know, it's always nice to, when you're not well, Friends will bring food for you and, you know, somebody will come and cook and offer to cook and do things. I didn't want that because I'm very particular with what I eat. So I didn't want anybody bringing anything for me. So instead, I cooked. And, and you know, when I say cook, I ain't still, you know, that a pot and thing. But cook the way that I would normally eat and parcel everything out nicely, set out, label. <laughs> For about two weeks after yesterday, I had things remaining, huh? Um, I did that. So I was well prepared. And of course, I did. I, I am very spiritual. So I did my special prayers. You can't leave all that. And that morning, Terry, I was ready. I was but ready. you also did some things with some finance. <laughs> oh, oh, how could I forget that? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I always talk about money. I made sure, listen, Terry, and I went. I paid my insurance, and I paid up front, eh? because remember, I'm going early in the month, uh, mid-month, so things are not, not up for payment as yet. So I paid my life insurance, my health insurance, <laughs> all the bill, every any the normal bills that you would pay. I went and paid up everything, because I don't want to come on and somehow electricity, you know, and I didn't want to leave that responsibility for anybody. I don't want to be relaxing and then hear, oh God, da, 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 da. or the policy laughs and all that. So I made sure everything was really up to date for me. Um, what else? I, I did that. Um, I also arranged Terry Ann, who was going to pick me up because let me tell you this, Terry. When you, and in this situation, you don't want to call on a friend or a family member who could get you more nervous. You understand? And by the time they reach for you, you come and they upset you. So let me say that. Eh? You have to really decide who you want to wrong you in that critical period, even to take you to the hospital and come back for you. So let me just say that. So because I know my friends and family, I assigned, well, my daughter is, is very calm. She is not one to get all worked up. So she was the one assigned. And I have a darling friend who is also a medical doctor who said, knowing me, <laughs> she said, Jennifer, coming up and I'm waiting on you. You know, because she know. And I know I'm trying to come out and I see her, they are good. You know, this so that was me in preparing to even go and come back. So that went well. And you I, know, Jennifer, I, yeah. I have to say that, you know, we there's a difference between handling an unforeseen crisis, let's call it a crisis, or something yeah. where urgency happens in our life and we have to be scrambling. But that's not normally the case. Very often we know something is going to happen and the thing about it is what you what really stands out and and i admire is sitting back being realistic you know you had your priorities right pray you oh, yeah. have to pray you leave it there but then they say prayer without works is nothing that is like just talking to thin air you did your research and then you started to prepare so that anybody having to come in 
would would really have to deal with what is beyond the pale, beyond the norm. Yes, you know? yes. It, 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 you, you made sure in your preparations that you were armed with facts, that yes. research and listening mm -hmm. to those doctors and that making sure that yeah, you did your shopping, you clean it. <laughs> I think she was a little obsessed with cleaning the house. <laughs> Clean the house, make sure the yard was okay so that, you know, you, you were conscious that of what environment you wanted to yeah. have for recuperation in. And you took control of those things. And and I I really do believe that by making sure that that mind, that body, that soul, that environment was where you would optimally want it. Had yeah. a big, big part to play in your recuperation and your fast, um, your fast recovery. And sometimes we don't, we get so caught up in the panic of the situation. Yes. We forget that we have to recuperate. <laughs> yeah. you know? And and Terry, and you're quite right. And I must add also. Because of the, the, I had several visits to the clinic at Arima New Hospital prior to the surgery. And on each occasion, I was very, very comfortable and trusted the team that was going to work with me. I had no doubt at all, at all, you know, and I must admit, I had a very young team where I trust when they're young, I say they're young, they're bright, they must know what they're doing, you know. And that morning of, of surgery, when you go in and in the room for them to prepare you to actually go into the operating theater, they all came and introduced themselves. You know, I'm so and so. I am this doctor. I'm the anesthetist. I am, you know. And when I watched the team, I watch you wrong. And surgeon was talking to me. I, I really am telling you. Of course, I went in there with a lot of feet. I, I, you know that, right? But I felt comforted, like this is my family around me, and I knew each one of them wanted the best for me. All right, I want to throw in a curveball here. It took a lot for her to get to that stage. Huh? Yes, <laughs> because of course. we know that Jennifer is a hypertensive person. Oh, yes. Well, I, I didn't even Jennifer... bother to mention that's a given. <laughs> <laughs> that was a given, you know? So <laughs> I didn't bring that in. It is a given. <laughs> but I will tell you guys, one of the issues, because I spoke to Jennifer the night before, and one of the concerns was, Jennifer, you can't let this blood pressure get out of control, and next thing they can't do this surgery. <laughs> you I, rem Sorry, I, I remember your words. Now, my, my hypertension has a lot to do with anxiety, anxiety. you have to control. So when I got I knew, let me, I took medication early before. Right? <laughs> Normally I take my medication in the night. I took it early, early in the morning. I was, you know, allowed to do that. So I went and saying, yeah, I'm ready. You know, my mantra in my head, saying my affirmation. <laughs> when they check the pressure, I don't know what happened. You know, say, oh gosh, it is high, you know. I remember Terry, I remember we was on a tell. I said, God, listen to me. <laughs> and not going back home and come back here again. You, I mean, is no way. But I had a lovely scene. You say, you say, darling, don't worry. We're gonna, we're gonna get it down. Before you know it, of course, they sedate me. And, and I only knew when I got up after that. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> but, but seriously. Yeah. But you have to trust. I, I think it's an important part of, of the these these situations we have to control in life. Yeah. When you think of the serenity prayer, have oh, you yes. what I can, that's <laughs> what I can't, and it was them to know the difference. And I think your blood pressure is something where you know the difference. And you <laughs> I tell you, I say not me, I ain't going back home. So <laughs> but, so that was it. And and it really, I mean, as I said, everything went well, thank God. And Terry, and when I got home, mm -hmm. of course, a sense of relief. Huh? I don't have to tell you. I, I just say, no, God, I'm only praising and thanking God because, you know, it's a big thing to me. Um, and I decided, Terry, and you see, that week, yeah. I am not accepting any calls at all. I don't want to hear from nobody. I needed that week to, to, to 
calm myself, go within, and really stay in that. So because you have to be calm, you have to be positive. And, you know, I always believe in energy and I didn't want to chance any negative energy coming into my space um, to affect me, right? So I took the opportunity that week to, get, but to be, to give praise, to continue praising and, and, and being, you know, thankful for where I was, you know, where I'm at at this stage. I also, um, it is natural, Terrian, for fear to come up. I ain't saying, hey, I ain't saying I'm floating, eh? but expect when your little pain hit you and when you can't move your hand and when I can't turn as I want, I say, oh, God, Lord, when you think I can't move my hand again, you know, these sort of things. But every time that the fearful thoughts, came to mind, I meditated and focused on, you know, positive and see myself. And I, I, I did a lot of self-talk and say, you went through this and you come out good. What are you worrying about? You know, if you really believe in God, you believe in prayers, hey, cool yourself. You know, in terms of, of a lot of self-talk. So I would say I replace a lot of the fear with, with faith. An affirmation. I am on believing affirmations. Um, so that prevented me from really being anxious. Um, the other thing I did, and my my daughter was the the I say the main caregiver for the week, but she came in smiling, going and coming because she didn't have much to do. It was just a matter of any morning. Taking out the smoothie, you know, make everything and I put it. The <laughs> smoothie there. Nobody was bringing <laughs> no soup for Jennifer, and Jennifer didn't want. No, so the 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 breakfast was routine for her. Some smoothie, simple sandwich, half mm. half cheese paste, and thing paste, everything there. Um, and that's what she did. She ensured that. I can't lift anything, so certain things there to make sure, you know, I clean up. So it wasn't much for her. She, so she was happy. She didn't come grumpy, you know. Um, so that, that was it. I also slept, and, and this was suggested by her. And then she said, you know, still sleep with music, calm and music. And I said, no, I am okay. She said, no, just in case. So every night, um, he put on common music, etc. So Terian, for me, I was good, you know. And by the second week, Terian, I said, you know what? Okay. Well, I had um. Oh, let me let me let me say this part. I'm going a little fast. So yes, my daughter was right there for me doing that, but she had to go to work, do some some classes, and she had to. It's nothing, you know. And she said, Mommy, how you make it? I say, I you know I have friends I could call on. So let me tell you all folks. So I call on Terry Ann and I call on two other very good friends to take the the to, And they know me, so they know they have rules and, uh, and what to do and what not to do in terms of stressing me out in any way. So I am pleased to say that it worked. I mean, <laughs> they followed. Knowing me, it was all... Fun talk, relaxing. It wasn't what girl in pain. Let me rub it. And no, nothing like that. We chatted. If I didn't feel to talk, they just leave me alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Knowing that I needed to rest. So again, special thanks to Terry and special thanks to um mm -hmm. my very good friends who came, my doctor friend. She's very thing. So she, I know she wouldn't want me to call her name, but that, and I must put a plug here. Let me tell you, for those who don't believe in our health system, I got called on the first day to find out how I was going, if I had pain, etc. Twice on the second day by the, by the doctor, by the anesthetist to say, hey, how are you going? Everything all right? So and so and so. That was the, 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 the service I, I got. Um, 
So as I say in this story, let me just take the opportunity to, to thank all the others, everybody who is on board with me, who on board with me. <laughs> um, I had a, <laughs> I had two priests <laughs> appointed <laughs> who took me, you know, went straight to God on my behalf. I am um, thankful for that. I have my, all my friends, the family members, the um. Uh, the, I belong to the care ministry of the church. They 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 called, um. But everybody, everybody who who I thank everyone. Of course, our five point eight G tribe who called in, etc. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It made a difference, and that's why I can happily here sitting chatting with you. So so folks, so that was so my first week was a very common one. One where I was able to heal properly, um, you know, without much, without any complications, I should say. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, thanks again, of course, to so Miss Sujant, who I will tell you about at some other time, but uh, and the medical team at at the at Arima. Mm -hmm. Um, so Terian, so in the second week, she just left the now out of the second week. The second week was a different week for me. I sent notes saying, yes, I can now receive calls and messages and, um, you know, chat with persons. And because of that decision, I, um, I started to reflect. I said, you know what? Certain things that when people call, they said to me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I say, I think I should share my story. That's when I decided, Terry, huh, to, to to share uh, the story at this time. Mm -hmm. um, just, just before we go ahead, I think mm -hmm. there was something that happened in the first week that would really set the context for so that first week of isolation. Mm -hmm. I solation <laughs> meaning uh -huh. that you kept to yourself and so on and and you spoke about it was a very reflective period but you shared yeah. with me that there were some things that you were able to do specifically congratulating yourself oh yes oh yes um, and release it during that isolation period yeah um terry and i quite agree you know when chatting, I take things for granted and you just bring me back to remind me that, hey, you're different, you know, John, it's not everybody do this. And yes, I felt I was really, really, Terry, and I'm still is very happy with my situation. But in that week of being quiet and going within, I still, and you mentioned, I mentioned to you before, we all have fears. And I have, I always have a thing about money. <laughs> of course, I could never tell you so much for how much money you want to put aside. I have a thing that, and this is because of my background. Like the um, kind of money job is not that you want to money, you know, but I like money. to have thing in case, money in case, money in case, always in case, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing for me. Oh God, I wonder, you think I'll have enough money and that sort of thing. I was able really and truly to release that type of, of as a coach, I see the gremlins, the money gremlins that, that, that keep popping up in my head. You sure you want to do this? You sure you want to do that? I really, and you, you know why I was able to release it, Terry Ann? I focus on my blessings. I really felt blessed. How do you say Goodness of God, God, listen, I say, give me a break. What money you want? <laughs> if you had, and I'm, I'm serious for this one. And I said, you know, if you had five, well, let me let go. Okay, let you have three, or if you had, if I had 300,000 that I always, I want this set in the bank, Terry Ann, that would have been spent up because I would have taken that and say, I ain't going to here, I'm going to, you know, I'm going where it is said you get the best medical care. Okay, I'm spending money on this. I'm going to no general hospital. I'm going private. <laughs> no. Nah. 
changing around the, the, the room. I want the bed thing. So I want a different type of uh, bed that, you know, I would have spent that money, you know, and I would have spent it saying, well, I'm going to always get back to Philip again. That is how me. So when I started reflecting, I said, God provided everything. You fussing about this, that, that. Here you are being so blessed and you still want to. <laughs> so I swear, if I continue along that way, God will withdraw his blessings <laughs> and not bless me anymore. So yes, I was able to release do that thing. You know what I released again, Terry, and that I didn't share with you yet. And I, I know we talked about it on the show about my car, whether I want a new car, whether I'm going to sell a car, whether I should keep the car. <laughs> it came to me. Look how God has seen your prayers. The car ain't gonna be able to drive for a while. So we are worrying about any car, car, car. If the car park up there, even if God put a new car there for you, <laughs> you can't drive it for a while. Mm -hmm. So I was able to release that that sort of uh, jumping up. And a lot, I let go of a lot of, un and I could say now, when you look back, unnecessary, unwarranted kind of worry. Yeah, yeah. I am not worry-free, but I'm far from how I was before. <laughs> but I, think I am good i one am the, blessed and yeah one of the biggest and the most significant things that and i i will say this again being folks being an observer of jennifer yeah um jennifer believes her faith is deep her faith is sure her faith is yeah. true um she is a grateful person she is a faithful person however like Many of us, we don't necessarily congratulate ourselves for yeah. our victories. Everything, and I mean 100%, is put on God, on Creator, whatever it is. And that's mm -hmm. fine because you, what you are is because of the gifts that I are mean, given yeah. you. But many, all of us have gifts given. But yeah. it is up to us to work those gifts and make something happen. A lot of us choose to leave them on the shelf or not challenge ourselves and so on. And very few of us are able to look yourself in the mirror and say, well done, yeah, well done. And I think you were able in that period oh, yes. of reflection to also, in addition to being grateful, in addition to understanding the blessings that you receive, to able to look back on your journey, at your achievements, and to be able not only to say thank you to your God, but also congratulate yourself, to express pride in yourself and your achievements. Um, yes, it may be a way of being prepared for any outcome to surgery, but certainly, you know, you come out on the other yeah. side, good and strong, and you also come out knowing that, yes, I am really happy with what I have done and how I have used my gifts. And I, I think that's an opportunity a lot of us miss. And I, I really did celebrate. But you know what, too, Terry, eh? to really remove some of the fears because they're worrying. Oh, gosh. I wonder if I did this. I wonder if I did that. I should have. I ask myself, I, I confront the immortality. I ask myself, you know, Jennifer, if God says, Jennifer, you only have one week to, to live in or a month, what would you have done different? What would you think? And when my answer is nothing, I, I, you know, I believe I did all what I had to do. I achieved. I congratulated myself as a mother. Um, as a friend, and I went through these things after I say, hey, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> right? You can move on in life now. Remove those fears, you could. And it is really important, I, I totally agree, to take that time, embrace our talent, embrace our skin, love ourselves, hug ourselves, and say, hey, you're good. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. 
so that 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 was it and um as i said moving forward for the second week i started to reflect and wanted to share just you know my observations and my feelings and what came to me terry and based of course on my and I, I didn't receive, I wasn't one, I'm not one for visitors during this time. I, mm -hmm. I really limit who could come into my space during this period, right? So a lot of my interaction was over the phone um, with, with well-wishers, persons who called me, etc. And what I found, Terry Ann, is many of, of, and we're dealing, of course, here uh, with our 5.8G tribe. And many of my friends, certain um, um with the conversation, certain things that was said to me, I say, you sure? I, you know, really? And that was many don't go for annual checkups. I remember Nat Wilshire when he was talking and mentioned that is so important. They don't go, they don't see the reason. You know, and you know, I felt that women will go. But the men and the ones who won't go, nope, I really, and the, I talking about friends, I talking about people I know who call me, right? Stand for I never, I mean, if I get the virus or something, you just do that, but not really for a total, all the blood work, et cetera, et cetera. And they may say, you know, they have the aches and the pains, but, you know, um, I found many, and I said many, eh, I got a lot of calls, Terry, and, and so many of us women, don't, they have never even done a mammogram. Some say, oh, I did that a couple of years when I was so-and-so age and we had to do a medical, maybe for work or something like that. But consciously say, let me go. There's the myth too that when you reach a certain age, you don't go again, right? I fact-checked that and, and the information they had was wrong. But, you know, um... The, don't so the men, the men just telling them about prostate, forget it. <laughs> They're not going at all. So basically, what I found is that self-care is not at all a priority for our age group, which I found very sad. But let me tell you what is a priority, what I saw and heard from Trump chatting with them as a priority. Taking care a uh, 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 thing. Fixing, fixing everybody in the house and who not in the house. Being the best supporter out into and finances. So whoever, and we're not talking children, remember we're talking about 50 plus. So we're talking about adult children. You're talking about children who have branch, you know, children so we have brands, etc. cetera. Terry Ann, oh gosh, boy. No wonder we get so tired and so stressed out. Everybody in the little conversation, they will say, oh, good girl, you know, man, if I had time, I would have do so. If I had time, I would have done that. And I'm saying, I'm good because I don't need your visit. But why, what people in your box want? Why are you so busy? Well, you know, so-and-so can't do that, I'm doing it. I lend my car to do and so and they have it. All these type of things, Terry, but everybody else but self. Everybody else but self. And we swear that as seniors, we know it all and we could fix all the problem and the little money we have, you could help them out because poor souls and mm -hmm. all these things. Yeah. So, Terry Ann, listen to me. That for me was not really an eye opener because we chat a lot in our programs about all these things. But it is, it, it just, he told him to me and I said, no, nah, I need to chat a bit with you about the, and, and Terry and it bottom line, let me say this too. It's not about money. You know, I tell you in my head is always, I must have money put aside. No, 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 no. No talk was about money. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line I would say is that, hey, I decided, let me chat about it. Because I am hoping, you know, you tell me I always have hope. <laughs> Believe. I don't care what you say, Terry. I still feel, oh gosh, man. <laughs> Samuel, let me talk. It's okay. Let me talk. And something I say might hit home 
for them to decide, hey, let me take action. Whether they would or not, but uh-uh, this, this is a serious situation, you know? Yeah. And at the bottom of it, you know, at the end of it all, when I, when I pull my thoughts together and I say, but Jennifer, what's the bottom line? Why you feel they don't want to go to the doctor? They don't want to, not even, I think some people who don't exercise is because they're afraid they're going to drop down. <laughs> <laughs> because deep down, they know they may not be as healthy and they could drop down anytime. Um, the other thing I came up with in my thought, my observation, and this is me, we were really afraid, and I'm repeating how a friend of mine is saying, we were really afraid to dead. You understand? And because of that, we don't want to anything. You don't want to go to no doctor. We don't nobody tell us nothing to make us feel we will die. And um, so just again, and I want to put a little, you know, um, a little small statistics here. And you remember, I come out of the insurance field. I know about the facing mortality, et cetera, et cetera. So I did a quick research, a quick, um, and saw that, and this is Trinidad and Tobago statistic. This is not me making up anything. As of 2024, the estimated expectancy age Terrian was 76.5. That is 76. You understand? And that is why I feel if we know that, <laughs> you know, I'm a believer. I feel those who are not aware, if you all know that, don't you think you would really do something about self-care and about yourself? Terrian, what do you think? <laughs> you don't believe they would. <laughs> I think you are driven by data and facts and mm -hmm. I think that we are such frightened people so you look at that statistic and say 76 all right but look I have friends who are 78 79 80 and I'm here today or I am in my late 60s or early 70s and I ain't doing too bad and that People convince themselves that that statistic is not them. But I also think that we as a cohort have built up so many dependencies around us. Deep in our hearts, we know that we are holding up a very shaky structure. <laughs> a structure that is so dependent on us whether it is the spouse, the grandchildren, the children, the parents, the, so many things because of how we've managed life out of love that are now we are really the hub of a wheel. And many of us believe that that hub cannot be taken to the shop to put down for a day or two to check it out, get it fixed. Because if the hub sits down, all the spokes have to be set aside mm -hmm. also. And we cannot find it in ourselves to do that time out. And all of us, Jennifer, all of us, we feel the pains. We walk up some steps and we know that three years That's ago, sad. we were doing it faster and we're not as winded. We reach up for something and we find that when we reach up there, something stretch and feel a different kind of way. And we we just pause and we shake it off. We, we know, we feel it and we know. And we, we hope and we pray, we pray that, all right, it will pass. Because just now, yep. the son, the daughter, the husband, the grandchild, the, the prayer group, the whatever it is will the little project we're working on, it will pass. And after that, we could go. That denial of, of the importance of the hub is, is the fear of facing that hub is yeah. so great that there's no statistic that can be presented that would make people change their minds. Sisters, mothers, grandmothers, aunts, uncles, 
family will be falling down with cancer, hypertension, heart, things that yeah. are hereditary. And we will still say we are the exception. We are not, we don't have to check it now. Or for a week or two, we'll come off the salt and we come off the sugar. And when <laughs> life goes back to normal, yeah. Or we'll go and take a walk around the block and say, right, I exercise it. <laughs> and it will all come back to normal. So that fear, that 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 utter fear just overrides statistics. It just overrides. Statistics. Yeah, Terry, and I still want, I mean, I hear you. And I'm thinking. No, I agree with you. But <laughs> you know, what I also observed, um, and I will say it came up and you know, came to mind too, is that it is it, it had to be a wake up call for some of us. Um like if you, you have someone in your family, you drop them, but you just said it. Even when these things happen, they just sit back and say, and that focus on themselves and let me just take action. But yeah, like let, let me and say that. Let me paint a scenario for you. Let me paint a scenario yeah. for you. I am betting that 90 99% of your callers had this approach. Oh gosh, girl, is cancer? Oh jeez. Oh gosh, girl. And I bet 99.9% .9 tell you about a bush, a tea. They gave you a story about a story that they hear from a story from somebody else. Nothing based on fact, nothing fact. that with you ask them, you sure about that? They can't support it. And all of them have an underlying sense as though what has happened to you may be too close to them and you literally see the fear wall building up so they're peeping over it to make sure that your contagion don't come across here a denial of what is real sorry and let me tell instead you instead of looking at how you are approaching it and your positivity no. and so on they're protecting their fear and they're protecting their negativity they're protecting it because they have to hold on to it I want to bet that that is what you would have faced a lot. Well, of you know you're spot on, right? You know you're spot on. And I um the other thing too, and somebody say, um, well, you know, yeah, don't worry, you know, your mother is over a hundred, so you're gonna live until a hundred. And I want to say, oh, I'm seriously, let's be serious. But what you are saying is so true. You hear, boy, let me get you, let me, let me. I have a popper tree, my popper tree. Let me tell you all, since we did that that talk, planting food and all that. Yeah. I planted yes. a popper tree then. Terry and my popper tree it's had mm -hmm. real thing. And why I'm saying this, I'm going to say, John, probably could bring in a popper tree here. Yeah? I was fed up hearing about <laughs> drinking. You must use popper. The popper leaves. The popper leaves. Good. Listen to me. If I listen to them, the whole tree will have been just thing by now. So, so you're quite correct. It's always the and let me tell when they tell you about that, eh? And the story about so and so who get diagnosed and you know, the third that Terran is so important to why and I should know as a coach, I'm just saying it like this. Oh gosh, why they feel they they they, they, they <laughs> Let me put it this way. Many people mean well, eh? but she's man. All in good meaning. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Save us with summer. No, if, as I said, that first week, I made sure I was well grounded. Eh? <laughs> Nobody coming in my space or talking to me with any negative. So it's well grounded. So this week we're talking about, it bounced <laughs> off for of me. Yeah, but Jennifer, at the end of the day, and yeah. I don't usually take the side of the person who is hiding from reality yeah. um, and I'm not empathizing with you now not you the, the, the yeah. people who are doing yeah. it I'm not empathizing with you I disagree with you I think you are dead <laughs> wrong dead to dead wrong I think it, you're doing you your family your children no good by this this set of stories you like to make up with or watch all kind of silly YouTube videos 
that that are, that are not based in fact. I have no empathy for you, no sympathy Gosh. for you. But, but I understand that when things like this happen to somebody close to you, it amplifies the fear. Yes, it, it is possible that this could be me. And I also know deep down inside, you say to yourself, if you even whisper it, you don't say it loud to yourself. It, it echoing in the back, but you're not saying it to yourself, huh? but it echoing. Mm -hmm. Oh God, thank God it's not me. Oh God, thank God it's Jennifer, not me. I'm sorry for Jennifer, but thank God it's but, me. Yeah. yeah. And that fear, together with love, together with goodwill, just pulls you deeper into the denial hole, which could could cause you to mm -hmm. not have a result like Jennifer, which is being proactive, which is staying in a mindset that helps your body to heal, which is making sure that the average, now if the average is 76, we don't know how wide a distribution it is. The average is the right. average of all. There yeah. may be some going to 115 and there may be some dying at 30. Yeah. Average makes no difference, but you can decide where you want to be and plan to suit. We can't let that fear and that, oh God, it happened to Jennifer, it could happen to me. Oh gosh, this one did this and this one did it with piece of stories and piece of stories. We, we have to cut that out. Yeah, and, and I think too, we came out of, uh, are we in a... At this stage in life, we grew up with so many false stories. We also didn't know in those days, they hardly talk, you know, the person dropped dead and said, what happened to them? It may be, it always, it may be because they did this, they didn't drink this, they didn't do this, they didn't do that. And somehow that they carried in this modern time, it's the same thing you're hearing. And I know in fear, some people shut down and then they go to that mode. And others would use it in a positive and take action. But I want more to take action, Terian, than to be stuck with a head. I mean, let me say this one too. I mean, I must, you know, we could sit and talk and talk and I'm not be doing two shows, right? So let me just say this part. You see, when it comes into healthcare, man, Terian, and, and with this experience, I have learned, and because I did more reading and I have so many friends with ex those similar experience, my having cancer and you having cancer, even if it's the same breast cancer, is a completely different thing. The procedure may be different. The test may be different. And you know what? And I just want to bring back this because this properly stay in my head. Do you know, for instance, I'm hypertensive, taking medication for hypertension, right? You sending me to drink a set of purple leaf, which can raise my <laughs> pressure more. They do it, 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 so I want people to start to think now. We do, 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 leave that for the doctors. Forget. Don't feel you have to recommend anything if you don't know. The other thing, and I have darling friends, eh? So on th three, well, darling friends, Jennifer, you sure you want to continue with the hospital? <laughs> you know, they ain't going to take you on and on. You had to sit on them, you know, long time. They used to say scrub bench, but I have some sophisticated friends, so they wouldn't say scrub bench. This, you know, you'll have to sit on here long, and you know, and you know, and you know. We still have this thing, Tarian, that the last place you should go if you sit. Is at the public institutions. And I, you know, when we chat again, I really have to give high praise. I mean, and and you see that thinking and do that thinking and encourage ours to, 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 to deal with that. I will leave that for next time because especially if you so, think money is I see. Especially yeah, if you think money is I, I am so passionate. And, and let me tell you, because I came out in insurance and we talk a lot, and they say, What happened to your medical plan? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying this have nothing to do with my medical plan. My medical plan has used medical plan. Think about it. I am given the opportunity and sent to the facility that have all the, the, the machinery and everything, all the professionals to make sure that they could see me through this time. 
how medical plan we change to this? I trust the system. You know, I trust the system. You so pay for the system. You pay yeah, for the system. We did for the years. As I tell people, I paid taxes. We had, I don't even know, they, do they still have health search? And I think in our time yes. we had yes. health search. And you yes. pay it and you do all these things. You know, you pay NS and you pay everything. So, but at another time I will go into that. But yes, the mysterian is my advice to people. Hey, ground yourself. And the other way to stop it too, and I did it up to this morning with someone, but then any stories is be something else. And we Chinese always know somebody who did something, but let me give you the joke. The end result is always they didn't make it or something. Eh? It don't be, it don't be happy ever after. And it is a so they swear they can for they're giving you that comfort and thing, you know, but the stories will it never end. Happy ever after. <laughs> it's always, but because they went so and so that happened, because they didn't drink this, because, because, because. And the other thing is, it was funny, you know, I always been told, I hope you're resting and you're not getting out of that bed. And my thing is, the first thing they tell you after surgery oh. is get up and walk. But here, yeah, don't get out of that bed now, you know, you lie down. You, but I, I thank everyone. I mean, it's really, I know they mean well. And I'm just sharing because, Terry Ann, we have to, to really check ourselves, take care. I want to point out this too. Be truthful now. We tend to hide and not think. So when you go, let me tell you, I, I, I really believe the reason that I was able to be diagnosed properly and, and all the different tests is because I was very open when they, 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 they would make my situation. I found out my family history exactly. Yeah. Going back, although, you know, the older people aren't telling you certain things, but I investigated. So I knew my family history. I was very open with my personal things, what I saw, what I felt without a shame. I have... A very young medical um, team, a team of young doctors and specialists attending to me. And I'm mentioning this, Terry, because our age group very biased. They're very biased. So when a young, you find as a young doctor, you're watching your first thing you see, they don't know anything. And that is the start of our problems too. I'm not going to so-and-so, they're young, what they know, you know? Um, so for me, that it has certain things that you say, hey, check, go check yourself now, <laughs> right? Take action, uh, you know, take action, do something, go stop criticizing, you know. But how I will translate that? How I will translate that? And and, and well, unless you friends, unless you have facts, eh? sorry, unless you have facts. real facts. But yeah. even if you don't have facts. And you really don't know, and you are afraid. You are afraid, and you have a dear friend who is facing this kind of challenge. I think the best thing would be, you see, to in a very honest way share that anxiety with your friend, but also say, "I really wish you the best." Tell me how you are feeling. Shut up yeah, and listen. I, yes, Shut I agree. Shut up and listen. So you let your friend knows that you're anxious. Your friend knows that you're anxious. I shared with Jennifer, I spend the night in prayer. But yes. listen to them. Look at what they are projecting, what they are feeling. And if they are confident in their medical team, if they're confident in the process, and if they come out of it and they're smiling, oh gosh, don't start the stories. <laughs> You're sure? You're sure? Yeah. But Jennifer, I think I think this was great. I think we we have just about a few minutes left. Um, as I said, you're a trooper. You, you you're not a trooper in that you're extraordinary. I think you you live your mission and you show you showed that yeah. what we do here is truly how you live. 
And I pray that if I ever have to face a challenge like that, I can also prove to myself that my words are very reflective of my actions to really have a positive life going forward for the 5.8 G. And I promise people this, you've had a fantastic experience in the health system. Last week, I am I'm actually in the process of doing my biennial executive medical. And that is a thorough head to toe all kinds of things. Uh -huh. I'm going to give you the cost of all the tests, all the, yeah. because I'm doing it through labs. I'm not going into the hospital system to do it. Right, yeah. And then I'm going to put a question. Is that figure, whatever it is, paid every two years worth me knowing my status? Yeah. And that determines whether I stay hiding behind a wall or I am prepared and I know what's going on with me so I can be proactive as you've been in being prepared yeah. and getting the best outcome no matter what happens. So. Yeah, Terry Ann, and as I said, the start of it for me was similarly doing all the, the not at the, okay, I did privately when I did all the yes. initial blood works and all the different things, yeah. including the mammogram. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. took me to where I am now. Yeah. So, the my if I have to close here, I would say, listen to me, check yourself, love yourself, and I think when we love ourselves, we will take care. Absolutely. Because if I didn't, uh -uh, create that lovely space for you to be happy in. Definitely. And it is is not about money; it's about choice. It is about your choice, and your choice is for you to just live a happy life. And not worry about hey, leave leave God to decide when is your time. When is your time exactly? Yeah. <laughs> okay, this has been fantastic. Jenna, I'm so glad that we are back live. Yes. <laughs> recorded live. And from next week, we get an into preparing for Christmas. So <laughs> So nice being here. Nice seeing you again. And I'm sure everyone is happy to see us together. So yes, yeah, great being you. back. And I love you all. Eh? I mean, I mean, song a little rough, <laughs> buffing. <laughs> but yeah, I understand. I really understand. And as I said, my wish is that every one of you will check yourselves and um, love who you are. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>